fans of this car are primarily attracted by its brutal appearance, backed up by powerful engines. They just spoil the GLK reliability statistics. As soon as a compact crossover from Mercedes-Benz appeared in Ukraine, it immediately became a bestseller. Customers were impressed by the recognizable and solid design, high-quality finish, perfect driving performance and good off-road capability. In addition, the baby GLK had powerful engines out of rank, of which there were plenty in its arsenal, gasoline, turbo diesels, fours, and sixes, if you want, 170 horsepower, if you want, 272 horses, in a word, for every taste, color and thickness of the wallet. The motors are the most problematic, especially with petrol. On R4, the timing chain is stretched. In the sixes of the M272 series, the ceramic metal gear of the balance shaft wore out ahead of time, due to which the timing chain stretched and the valve timing left. As a result, the chips fell into the oil pump, putting it and the motor itself out of action. However, the timing chain was already stretched due to the damper of an unsuccessful design. A revocable action to replace the tensioner since 2013 solved the problem, but the chain still stretches. On 2.0-liter diesel engines with a common rail power system, at first, Piezo injection injectors massively refused. The Germans changed their supplier to Bosch. Since 2011, turbo diesels got rid of this problem. Do not forget to also control and change the attachment belt every 60,000 km. Otherwise, he can get shaggy and make trouble under the hood. The most powerful diesel V6 initially suffered from defective intake manifold swirl flaps. However, the problem was solved once and for all on the machines of the 2012 model year. Therefore, today it is the most reliable power unit. It is only necessary to refuel with high-quality fuel, change oil and filters on time. You will not find a version with mechanics in the secondary market, only options with a 7-speed automatic. The box was repeatedly modernized and improved, but it was not possible to cure all the sores. At risk are the valve body, the repair of which will cost from $1,000, and the control unit, about $500. And after 120,000 km, oil seals begin to snot, they ask for about $400 for a replacement. The transfer box, which divides the moment in a ratio of 45-55 in favor of the rear wheels, is mounted in a common housing with the automatic transmission. By 150,000 km, the transfer case bearings fail. As soon as you feel the vibrations in the corners and the uneven rumble of the engine under load, urgently in the service. It is better to spend $500 to $600 on a replacement than to buy a new dispenser for $4,000. The GLK's fully independent suspension is pretty solid. The first serious expenses will be required closer to 100,000 km. Then the support bearings of the racks will remind of themselves. The front levers wear out on average by 120,000 km. Shock absorbers are generally known as long livers, the front ones can withstand up to 120,000 km, and the rear ones, up to 150,000 km. So, a used Mercedes-Benz GLK is a good option to buy. The most hassle-free modification is the diesel version, preferably with a 3.0-liter V6. True, there are not so many of them on our market. You can look at the car with a 2.1-liter diesel 4, it has become more reliable after 2011. Almost all GLKs on our market are equipped with a 722 series 7-speed automatic transmission. During production, the box was repeatedly upgraded, but all the sores were never cured. Until now, the automatic transmission control unit is overheating and buggy, and oil is leaking through the gasket of the electronic wire bottle. Not too durable and torque converter. Diesel engines are much more reliable than gasoline engines. On the fours, at first the timing chain was stretched, the EGR valves and dampers were clogged, and the injection nozzles were massively denied. Through recall campaigns, almost all engine ailments were cured for restyling in 2012. The V6 diesel is considered the most reliable, which is also very economical. In the chassis, the main expenses will be required after 100,000 km, when you have to change the front lever assembly with ball bearings and silent blocks. In steering, after 50,000 km, tips and traction are waiting for attention. The rack is pretty reliable. As it wears out, you can order a restored one for $400 in exchange for the old one, and a new one from the dealer costs more than a thousand. The body has no problems with corrosion resistance. From chemical reagents, only chrome and aluminum elements get. And also a windshield installed at a decent angle, which is why it becomes unusable from flying sand, dirt and stones in two to three years. Replacement of native glass, $500, but it is better to put non-original, it is half the price. Electrical equipment is often weird. But these eccentricities are not of a mass nature. 
but are usually treated by restarting the engine. In extreme cases, flashing the software. The rest is trifles, the external lighting bulbs are on. There are interruptions in the operation of the climate control, the electric motor of the heater is short-lived, the central lock is buggy, 